It seems like one of the biggest celebrity tussles, which happens to be about Star Trek, might finally be over. William Shatner and George Takei have been sniping at each other for decades, but according to a recent interview, it looks like Takei has had enough. So today we're going to discuss the beef between Shatner and Takei and dive into the history of feuds between Shatner and the crew of the Enterprise. Starting off with Shatner versus Takei. Okay, maybe it didn't start with Shatner versus Takei, but with how the rest of the Star Trek cast thought Shatner was self-centered and arrogant. All due respect, sir, I hope this is some kind of Starfleet pep talk. I'm really too busy. I'm taking over the center seat, Will. You're what? I'm replacing you as captain of the Enterprise. George didn't like it, and neither did anyone else. Takei talked to the New York Times about his feud with Shatner, and mind you, this is just one of many places where he has talked about Shatner. According to him, when Shatner wants to get some attention for a project, he stirs up the so-called conflict between them. Shots fired. It's common knowledge that George Takei is known for being a proud, happy gay man who came out of the closet and married his partner in 2008, and some of the bad blood between Shatner and Takei comes from this wedding. Shatner said something about Takei's wedding, not because because he didn't want him to marry a gay man, but because he wasn't invited. According to Shatner, he didn't get to know Takei very well on the show because he was only there for a day or two, which is clear from the part he played. But Takei answered that he did invite Shatner, but Shatner never accepted the invitation. Maybe if they had just talked, this would have been resolved. Target, sir. Basal lock inoperative, sir. Best guess, Mr. Sook. Fire one ready. Next up, putting an end to it. George Takei has been touring the UK to promote his musical, Allegiance, which is based on his childhood in an internment camp for Japanese people. As part of a press tour, he went on The Graham Norton Show to talk about his work, and for the second time in recent weeks, Takei answered a question about William Shatner's recent comments about him by saying that he's done with answering such questions. When Norton asked, Takei said something very brave. He told Norton that he should be the last person to ask that question because it's so boring to talk about. Wow. Takei then added that when Will wants to sell a book, he needs to get the word out, so he says we are using him. Takei also called Will a cranky old man and said that he wouldn't say anything else about him, and then put the final nail in the coffin by promising that this would be the last time he says anything about him. Obviously, it sounds like George Takei is tired of talking about his old co-star on his latest tour and having their feud overshadow the promotion he's trying to do for Allegiance. But if Takei sticks to his word, this will be the last time we hear him talk about Shatner, his body, or how Shatner allegedly treated him on the set of Star Trek. Mr. Sulu. Nothing, sir. So, we're a sitting duck. Followed by the resolution we would like to see. Even though it sounds strange, the 85-year-old actor's words make us feel a little sad. Since Uhura's actress, Nichelle Nichols, died earlier this year, there aren't many people left from the first Star Trek series. It would have been nice to see two of the most famous actors in the Star Trek franchise put their differences behind them and talk to fans about the best parts of being an actor in that world. But if there is one good thing to take away from this news, it might be that at least one of the stars won't talk badly about the other in front of fans or the press anymore. In the same way, we wouldn't be surprised if William Sh Shatner had something to say about George Takei's seemingly final criticism, but he could surprise everyone and not say anything. Moving on to William Shatner's history of feuds. First up, Shatner vs. Nichols. Things must have been tense on the original series set for Nichelle Nichols, who played Uhura, to think about leaving after only one season. She even gave up her job by handing in her resignation, but a chance meeting with someone named Dr. Martin Luther King brought her back to the show. According to her, one of the promoters approached her and said someone wanted to meet her. At first, she thought it was a kid or a Trekkie, but to her surprise when she turned around in her chair and saw Dr. Martin Luther King smiling big, he said, I'm a Trekker. I am your biggest fan. She couldn't believe he was telling her this, but she had to let him know she was leaving the show, and safe to assume his answer changed her life and job. As Martin Luther King told her why she couldn't quit, he said that she was the first person to play a role that wasn't typical, and added that she played a role with honor, dignity, and intelligence, and then told her, you can't just quit. This is a big job. We're marching because of this. We never thought we'd see that on TV. As a result, Nichelle Nichols stayed with Star Trek, and she and Shatner shared the first kiss between two people of different races on TV. That's history right there. Coming up next, Shatner vs. Koenig. Chekhov, played by Walter Koenig, was a very likable character, and so was the actor. He and William Shatner never really had a fight or dislike for each other, but he did pay attention to what else his castmates had to deal with, and he understood why they didn't like Shatner. According to Koenig, life on a TV or movie set was very different back 
back then than it is now, and he ain't wrong about that. Before Star Trek, TV shows were built around one or two big stars, and the rest of the cast was just there to fill in the gaps. On Star Trek, this was the case, and Shatner often reminded the rest of the cast about this. Koenig thought Shatner was self-centered, but not because he was trying to be mean. Instead, he thought this was how the main star should act. Koenig also said that the other actors didn't feel the same way about each other, and according to him, the rest of the cast got along well, mostly because they hated Mr. Shatner. Ouch, that has to sting. Not to mention Shatner versus Leonard Nimoy. It all started when the actors were hired to play Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock, Kirk's first officer, on the 1960s TV show Star Trek. Even though it's a big deal now, the original series only ran for three seasons in the 1960s, from 1966 to 1969. But as Shatner and Nimoy's fame grew, so did the tension between them. Their disagreement seems to be more about egos than anything else, and Shatner seems to be the one with the bigger one. Well, that's surprising. Since he was the captain, he thought his popularity should be higher than anyone else's on the show. But when people started to like Spock's character more, William Shatner became hard to deal with. Shatner even admitted years later that he was jealous of all the attention Nimoy was getting, and he didn't handle it very well. And during this time when Spock's popularity rose, it was well known that Shatner would hide the bike that letter Nimoy used to get around the set as quickly as possible. Very petty. But it didn't stop there. There was also that time Shatner wouldn't let a photographer who was there to do a profile on Leonard Nimoy into the dressing room. Nimoy, for his part, refused to put on makeup until the photographer was let in, and the two actors nearly stopped work for the day. Last but not least, the two captains trying to resolve things. Even though there were many bad things in their relationship, there was also some good things, and in the end, they became close friends, and their relationship lasted for decades. And according to Shatner's book, Leonard, My 50-Year Friendship with a Remarkable Man, Nimoy is the only real friend he's ever had. We're gonna tear up here. Still, after Leonard Nimoy Nimoy died, Shatner's fans would torch him for not going to Nimoy's funeral. In Shatner's defense, there are many ways to deal with death. At the time, Captain Kirk was in Florida for the Red Cross Ball, but fans didn't see it that way, especially after hearing that Shatner landed in Los Angeles a few hours after Spock's funeral began. This made many people think he could have been there if he had wanted to, and the fact that Shatner and Nimoy had not spoken to each other in five years before his death makes the story even more complicated. Supposedly, this started when Shatner asked Nimoy to appear in the documentary The Captain but when Nimoy refused, Shatner sent his cameraman to film Nimoy at a convention and used this footage without Nimoy's permission. And after this, they never fought or talked about it because they never spoke again. Shatner said that he did try to make up with Nimoy and even sent him notes, but Nimoy never replied. That sucks. That's all for this video. What are your thoughts on George Takei finally putting an end to his beef with William Shatner? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.